So my story is about me falling in love with a prisoner. What was your response to him saying he's in prison? Oh my goodness, all hell broke loose. Was he did. ever released? I a stayed criminal. With the criminal. You stayed with the criminal, criminal. that yeah. needs to be in, in prison. prison. In prison. Prison Love is the title of the book of our next guest today on I've Been Through the Most podcast. We're so excited to have our city on the show. Welcome. Wow. Thank you so much, beautiful queens. You guys are stunning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you for being here, yeah. guys. I literally headhunted her. I saw her <laughs> on another show. And I thought to myself, wow, first of all, she is so well-spoken. Secondly, her story is so powerful. And uh, thirdly, I really, really respect people who come out from what they've gone through. Yes. Because it's not easy. It's not everyone who's going to say, well, you know, I went through this. I mean, I dated a prisoner. But I thought your story is so intriguing and there's so many lessons to be learned from Absolutely. your story yeah. especially yeah. what we're going now globally but nonetheless we are here now mm -hmm. tell us about you who are you sure easy hey um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm a i'm a free-spirited uh, open-minded woman uh, a mother of two beautiful children mm -hmm. a woman of god i'm a self-published author of a book titled prison love i'm a lyricist i've written 13 songs which I've wow. also included in the book. Yes. So I'm telling my what story. What does a lyricist mean? They write songs. You like so write lyrics. You write lyrics. So you don't sing. You don't sing. You don't compose. You just write. But there are uh, lyricists who are gifted vocally who mm. also sing. So I just write. I'm a writer. You are a writer. I am a She's writer. a your book is this thick. <laughs> yes, and I was like, I'm a storyteller. Wow. Yes. I'm also a qualified, a certified life coach. Mm -hmm. NLP coach and NLP practitioner. I'm also a motivational speaker. Yeah, that is me. Love it. Wow. Easy like Sunday morning. <laughs> Easy Absolutely like Sunday morning. love yeah. it. I also love your outfit. It's Thank orange. You. you are matching with your book. But I cannot let this go because, wow, your jewelry, your accessories. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> let us talk about the handcuffs on your neck, please. All right. <laughs> so... My story is about me falling in love with a prisoner, with a man who was incarcerated. So when I left my husband, who was abusive emotionally, physically, and financially, I fell in love with a man who was behind bars. Mm. We were in a relationship for four years. It was the best four years of my life. And most people wow. ask, well, how can a prisoner like, give you the best four years of, of your, your life? life? From a present cell it is possible right because i was in it for the love for the affection more than anything else and that is what he gave me that is what he showered me with for those years i was working for an ict company i was uh -huh. in sales yes i was in sales i worked in the sales department and we start talking he says then uh, i'm gonna phone you directly on your landline so i give him my my direct landline number yes so he phones me every day you know and obviously we every not, day every single day and we're not going to speak about him helping me find a place to stay because now he wants to know who i am you know he becomes yeah. consistent in checking mm. up on me he wants to know about my well-being and that of my daughter you know he's very concerned about caring me. caring and he wants to know what i ate how I slept, no oh one has ever goodness. asked me about <laughs> things, you know. And I'm like, okay, who is this man? He's ticking all He's the right boxes all at the this right point. Boxes. He's got all the right bandages that I need. He mm. becomes my breath of fresh air. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you why this man becomes my breath of fresh air. Remember, I'm from this bad marriage, yes. still divorced, not separated. I am actually working in Centurion, trying to relocate because I'm running from my husband mm. who's making death threats, right? Sure. So you can imagine the people that I'm speaking to, my friends, my family members, mm. whenever they call, they want to know if I'm okay, right. when, I'm f when I'll be filing for divorce. Everyone takes me back to a place I don't want to go yes. back to, right? And here's a person. Here's a person who doesn't know my story. Mm. He doesn't know this. All he wants to know is this woman that he's just met on the phone. He's intrigued by this woman. I don't know why, but we, we speak. And he represents a new beginning for me. Wow. He represents liberation. 
I look forward to our five minutes, ten minutes conversations because mm. they are refreshing. Mm. Mm. He's not asking me when I'll be filing for divorce. Yes. You know, if 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 your, exactly. your husband does speak to your sure. daughter, yeah. where he is he now? Where is he now? Mm -hmm. Because you know when you um, get into a relationship, yes, this is not a, a, a new relationship, but it's it's it's, it's he's an acquaintance now. Mm. Mm. It's nice to get into it because you are running towards something not away from something. Yep. So now with the people who were in my life, I felt like I was, they were helping me run away from what I, I was trying to run mm. from. And that's not what I wanted. I was tired of running away sure. from something. I wanted to run towards something. something. So I was running towards this guy because he represented a new beginning for me. Mm. So that is why he became my breath of air, fresh air. Hence, I asked him eight weeks later, you know, mm. when are you going to come and visit us? Yes. So that I can get to meet <laughs> and, you. And you know what? Since eight weeks is actually a very long time. It I was is. about to say, I'm like, you're patient. It is. Like, like speaking to somebody every day for eight yeah. weeks and not seeing them. I, I think, think you even fall in love faster with someone when you're not seeing, seeing them, them physically. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, the emotional connection is so much stronger. 100% because we connect to people through our souls. That's it, it is the souls that connect. So, Connecting via souls, it's more powerful Absolutely. than when you meet a person face to face like how we mm. are sitting now. Wow. But I was now longing to meet this person who makes me feel good, mm. who represents these wonderful mm. things in my life. Yes. So hence I asked him when he would come and visit us at work, you know, and he says, I won't be able to because I'm in prison. You. What do you say? What do you say when someone and he was just throws honest. this bomb at you? Wait, so the the person, so your colleague, yeah. whom you answered the phone yeah. for, right? Yeah. Did he never tell the you? Oh, this, oh, this, this is the sister. sister. No, she was not even did aware. Did she never tell you? No, no, she was not even aware that I was speaking to her brother. Look, it, it's I'm a few weeks into this new job, mm. and I report to her. I don't want to go and say, Whoa. hi, I'm speaking to your brother. You know, first impressions <laughs> last. Yes. You know? So wait, you answered the phone and she didn't even know you picked up her phone. I her just phone. gave her a message. But she this didn't know phone, that that's I it. continued speaking I see, to, to, to pursue them. the relationship no. and, and, and. She had no idea because you don't want to share that with yeah. people when you've just also met them. It's <laughs> been a few weeks. Sure. Yeah. So all these weeks later, you mm. ask a question and immediately becomes honest, doesn't even go around no. the bushes. He's no. like, I cannot come because I'm in prison. Yes. But this never came up. It never came up because I really never asked anything about mm. him. It was, you know, the conversations were short. You know, he, was, he would ask about me, mm. my day, how's work. And then he understood the nature of the job because his sister did uh -huh. the same thing. So we talk about that all the time. So I really, I wasn't really, really interested in knowing much about him. I just loved how he made you me feel. feel. Mm. That is what I held on to. Mm. What was your response to him saying he's in prison? Sure. I was like, okay. You know, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, okay, I'll come and see you then. Yeah? I promise you. You were that you were deep. I was deep. You, were, you had fallen. I had <laughs> fallen. I, and, and, and you know, prison Yo. was something foreign to me. I had never been to a prison before, but yet, huh. yet I still said that. But you know what? I wasn't completely shocked, right? Because I noticed that whenever uh, the sister would miss his calls, she would be so frustrated because it would either be me who picked up the call or one of our colleagues giving her the message yeah. she'd be so frustrated and i'd often say to her why you don't you just, just call phone, back. phone him back and i would observe her the whole day she would never return the call and i could not understand why because he used the same landline number and i mean their siblings she must have his cell phone mm. number so mm. why is she not returning the call also it was at a specific time every day at every day and there was just that missing piece of the puzzle uh, in this whole thing. Uh -huh. So when he says I'm in prison, now I found this missing All piece the of puzzle. the puzzle. Yeah. So I am even Makes more sense. curious now to meet Yo. this, this person. Man. You know, at mm -hmm. this point I am not in love. I am curious and this man makes me feel good. That's all I know. And that's what matters. And I want to go to even if he, this man was, you know, right <laughs> at the top of Kilimanjaro. <laughs>
I would have climbed Kilimanjaro. <laughs> yeah, I would have climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. And we to, to go this meet him. <laughs> because I loved how he You've made invested me feel. for eight weeks. Yes, yes, girl. <laughs> Yo, no, I completely understand. I also yeah. get why um, he was intrigued by you because I mean, you, I mean, your voice is just like yeah, very unique, so unique, so nice, <laughs> and you. you're like, I can imagine the conversations. Yeah. They're probably just so smooth and so yes. good, straight to Effortless. the point. It's like exactly what you needed for the day, and it's like goodbye. I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Yes. And now this moment comes, and you're like. Even if you're behind bars, uh-huh. I, am I am coming. coming. <laughs> Hold on, I am coming. Hold on, I'm coming. And the and day came. I went looking good like this Hi, in yay. my stilettos with my long weave at the time, wow. as if I was walking into the union building to meet the president. Wow. Hmm. When I was actually there to meet a prisoner hmm. I had never met before. I was very anxious. So the did you not even have an idea how he looks like? Never seen a picture. No. Never video called. No. Nothing. 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 He phoned from a landline number. But because I knew the sister, you know, I created uh, I see. the image, the in, your image head. <laughs> in my head, yeah. you know, based on the sister's uh, physical appearance, yes. appearance. But I was surprised when I saw him. He looked nothing like... The sister. the sister. Really? He looked, yes. He looked like Shona Ferguson because while we were sitting there. Okay, there, yes. girl. Come on now. Wow. He was handsome. Very, very sure, handsome. Sure. So as we went into the prison, uh, we, we were searched and then we went into the visiting area. Yeah. And uh, we were ushered to where we, 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 we had to sit. And while we're sitting there, I hear the, the sound of a gate opening. And mm. as I look up, I see this tall handsome man hey muscular the more muscular than than shona though muscular Yo. uh with with his beard he must have been in there for a while because he worked out yes <laughs> yes free gym yes. No, yeah. no 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 membership fees. <laughs> no membership fees yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and then he had all the time you know okay. to do that so you know with the beard and mustache trimmed in an O mm. shape Ooh. prison uniform slim fit with out stitches you know he looked like he had just walked out of a magazine very mm. psychedelic wow. and then he walks towards us beaming hey with a big smile on his face yeah. he greets everyone with me being the last he grabs my hand he kisses the hand he says thank you for coming to see me you look as beautiful as the sound of the voice remember that voice oh, oh that my voice. goodness <laughs> he continues yes. to hey. charm you oh god now he <laughs> sits me off my feet he sweeps me off. You're like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I am done. I'm ready for heaven. Heaven, open your doors. I, God, your daughter is ready. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. And he says, thank you for coming to see me. You look as beautiful as the sound of your voice. I wish I could kiss you on the lips. I'm just respecting my sister. He then looks up to hide their tears in his eyes. I don't think anyone else noticed. I was Mm. like, oh my goodness. So that was him maybe expressing how happy he is at that moment. Yes. And I was thrilled. I was over the moon. And now I am receiving emotional and and, and physical bandages from Mm. this man. The Mm. hand that he kisses is injured and he doesn't know that. Mm. It was injured from on the night my husband almost killed me because I covered my face with my hands that sure. I could not defend myself but I just put my hands on my face so that my face would not hit the wall mm. so now this man grabs the same hand and shows that hand love a criminal in orange in a prison treats me with love and tenderness sure. when the father of my child the man I was worth for 10 years treated mm. me like trash wow. and I'm thinking to myself not moment. everyone who has freedom deserves it. Wow. Because I believe that he also deserved to be wearing orange, but he got away with it. He got away with it because he threatened me when I opened up a case. So you actually stayed with a prisoner? Exactly. I stayed with a criminal. You stayed with a criminal that needs to be in In prison. In prison, of course. Then we were there for an hour, and when the visit ends, this man gives me a hug, he lifts me up. Hmm. Remember, the last time I was lifted up by a man was when by he's hurting you. When, when he was hurting me. It was violent. When I almost died in the presence of my daughter. 
Yet I'm in a prison amongst many prison, many criminals. A criminal who I did not even know what the nature of the crime he committed mm. is able to lift me up with love and tenderness. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness. Is this what God meant when he said, I am the Lord of your broken heart and I bandage their wounds? Has he sent someone to bandage those wounds? Is he now using this man? Because that sure. is how it feels. You felt safe in his I hands. I felt safe in the hands of a criminal in a prison. A in man, a maximum prison. In a maximum security prison. Yet I did not feel safe in my own home, in the mm. arms Ish. of my husband. Wow, this sounds like a movie. A movie. I'm yeah. so glad you yes. wrote it down in a book. <laughs> One day you have to document yes. it. Because, Absolutely. I mean, it's, it sounds so beautiful, but I know yeah. this is just a part of the story. Yeah. You know, um, so what then? So what, what happens? I mean, you said you had the most beautiful four years, and it sounds like it started in the most beautiful way. Yes, was he did. ever released? from yes, prison he and was. did the relationship progress he was uh, and we were happy for four years we even got engaged oh, while wow. he was in prison yes Whoa. and and when i say he gave me the best experience i mean i received roses chocolates gifts for the first time in my life from a man other than my dad it was from this man while he was in prison. while he was in prison what yes so he was romantic, he was doing the whole shebang. He was doing the whole shebang. This is a man who one day signed a check for me to go and pay school fees for my daughter. And then put a ring on it. And, pay, and put a ring on okay. it. Okay. Yes. All right. I, I, I see what you mean, girl. You see what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and when I say my husband abused me financially, I was the sole provider, you know. Mm. And initially it was because I was being there for him, giving him the support that he needed. But it was not for him to relax mm -hmm. and rely yeah. on me 100%. Yeah. You know, I believed in him and I just wanted him to pursue whatever it is that he was in pursuit of. But he relaxed mm -hmm. and, and then he delayed my, pro my progress because it felt like whenever I took a step forward, it felt like I was taking 10 yes. steps backwards. Yes. And then now I meet a man who is studying, who is working in prison, mm. who is reading books, who is writing a book, who is into public speaking, who is very active with yeah. limited resources. Mm. When a man who has all the resources is sitting and doing nothing with those resources, this one is utilizing his internal resources, the one who is in prison. Mm right and he he's concerned concerned about my daughter and her well-being and how she's doing at school and everything mm. those are the things that i'm referring to when i say he ticked all the, the right boxes. boxes he's giving me everything that i've been longing for yeah. he, we, we make so many promises to each other he sells me the idea of having a family again when i was no longer yeah. interested in wow. being married again or having a child again he sells me this idea and i buy it because I want to spend the rest of my life with this man. Mm. I want to mm. build something meaningful with him. And I believe we will, you know, build an empire. And I can't wait to see him in action when he comes out of prison. Like, I've met can his you imagine family. what he can do uh, if he was that When he has external inside. resources. Because he's doing this with internal resources, with very limited external resources. But now when he has all the external resources, it means now I'm going to mm. be a queen. Right? Who doesn't Were want Were you that? a queen? Oh my goodness, all hell broke loose when mm. he came out of prison. The man who was consistent in loving me from a prison cell became consistent in hurting me as if he had a score to settle. It felt like he put a sword on my back and twisted it every day. <gasps> Actually, anti-clockwise. You know when someone twists something clockwise? Mm. It, it, I think the pain would have been better. But mm. it, he was turning it anti-clockwise. Every day, gradually. Sure. But but when when did the disinterest begin or, or what went whatever? wrong? What went wrong? Was it the day he came out? Like what happened? Sure. Um, I still wish I I still wish I knew what went wrong, oh. because I I spent months psychoanalyzing this man. But you know, looking back now, um, he came out and he succumbed to pressure. Number one. Number one, he succumbed to pressure of catching up with his peers. Yes. He was there for eight and a half years. 
such a long time. That's and then he comes out, people who were driving taxis prior to his incarceration are now tenderpreneurs. They're okay. driving sports cars. They live in beautiful houses, right? People who used to bow when they see him no longer do, mm. right? He doesn't own a car. He has nothing. He's starting from zero. He's starting from zero. He complains that he doesn't have enough clothes. He doesn't have a car. He's wearing work suits. And I try to solve one of his problems, which is buying him clothes. Yes. He doesn't accept it. He doesn't appreciate that. He says, you are not my mother. Hey, hey, You're not going to be buying me clothes. Right? Okay. I'm like, okay. So what do you want me to do? Because you come home. You are so stressed. You are frustrated. You're complaining about everything. I can't buy you a car. But at least I can buy you clothes. And he was not working, he obviously, wasn't, because he, wasn't he was working. still he trying just to find out. his feet. It's yeah. only three weeks since he came out. We were only okay for three weeks. For so three after weeks. three weeks, it's like the pressure got to him and it, that was it. It got to him almost immediately. Eesh. He couldn't handle the pressure. And he, we, we moved in together immediately. Because wow. we were engaged and yes. our families had yeah. met. And you've also lost so much time. We lost so much time. We wanted so to now you up. just make up for that time. Make up for yeah. that time. Yeah. And our families have met. And then he has stated his intentions. They met while he mm. was in prison. He, they stated his intentions of marrying me when he comes out of prison. This is what he needs to work on. Not stressing about external exactly. factors. You know? mm. And um, he starts coming home late in the early hours of the night. And he says he's hustling. Uh, when I ask why he's coming home late. But and I explained to him that I don't have a problem with you being out there trying to find ways of earning a living because I had registered a, a business for him, a company for him while he was inside. So mm -hmm. he did everything, you know, with, in terms of compliance to get all the compliance documents. I'm okay with him doing such things, you know, during the day. Yes. But he comes home at 3 like a.m. What doing? kind of hustling is this? Is that, yeah. Now you get worried because um he obviously was previously in prison so yeah. you're like you're gonna go back yeah, that's what I'm if you're not you. doing the right thing exactly mm. and he was arrested for armed robbery armed robbery and i'm worried that he's back to his criminal ways okay mm. because why would he come and back? you care for him and at I this care. point and i love him but when i start raising these issues he says i am um treating him like a prisoner yeah, in his home. Him. Yeah. yes uh he this man has just been mm. released from prison he was told what to do what not to do for eight years and how to do it for eight years mm. so now mm. he comes out and i represent a prison official in his life now i'm a, uh, yeah, so a you're not allowed prison. to say anything i'm not yeah according to him ah. i represent it's a touchy second prison. now it's like yes it's everything stop. that you say yes. uh, uh, you so imagine so now i become a prisoner Yes, I become a prisoner of love because I am not free to express uh, what I feel and what I'm not happy with. Because when I do, I, I, I'm a prison official. So it means now I also become a prisoner, right? And then he starts being verbally and emotionally abusive. His yeah. tongue was as sharp as a razor. As mm. sharp as a razor. And he starts behaving like a little boy who has just walked into a candy store. <laughs> now he starts cheating on me with multiple women. <laughs> multiple <laughs> women. I died on the inside. <laughs> I died. The only woman that was there for him. Yes. In his and he enough. didn't care. And I would remind him. I'd say, how, I'd ask, how can you treat me like this? When I waited for you for four years, when you made so many promises to me, he looked at me and said, hey, hey, I survived the four, first four years of incarceration without, without you. you. I still would have survived. You didn't help me survive prison. You found me in a prison. So don't come here and tell me that you waited. You waited by choice. And he was right. So it was on you now. It was it's on like... me, but he was right. It was by choice. He says, I, I don't so owe you anything. So where's the sister now? I mean, are you, are you in connection He's, with the family? Talking. Are you expressing to them yeah. what you guys are going through? Are they helping you through it? It is tough. Uh, He's no longer in contact with the sister because during the... Re I think the sister did not think uh, the relationship would be serious. You know, she thought... Yeah. Yeah. She never imagined that I would be with a prisoner. You know? So she yeah. thought, no, Tzidinje is just being forward. Were you still working there? With the sister. When he no, when no, I actually I actually left um, the company. Things okay. got so bad between me and the sister. They got so bad that yeah, I ended up goodness. leaving the company, and I was unemployed for three months. 
So and he you are also, come you are with the brother. Yes, and he stopped. He cut contact with the sister while he was in prison because he was not happy with how she treated me. I see. And I also learned that she was a stepsister. Well, they were not related by blood. Oh, okay. Well, so that Makes th sense why they also didn't look the alike. Yes, they were not mm. related by blood. Uh, the sister was the, f the stepfather's daughter. And they didn't grow up together. They met when okay. the, the stepfather passed away on the day of the funeral. That is how they met. But yep. now they were close. Mm. It was, I think, okay. two to three years prior to his incarceration. So that is why it was mm. easy for him to, okay. to cut Just ties. Just cut ties because yeah, they so didn't know each other for, they didn't know for each that, other long. For that anyway. long. That is why he did not understand why she was treating me that way. But I was closer with his biological sister because I got to meet his biological siblings mm. Mm. yes but i started discussing this with his grandmother but i did not want to share the details with the grandmother i mean you know you don't of want to is the elderly the now they're gonna stress they now, now they're gonna stress and i believed that things would change i could not even discuss this with my friends i could not mention it because they mm. warned me that cd when this guy, when he comes out of prison, he's going to unleash his truth. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, And that's exactly what happened. Close it up. How do you go back to them? Yeah, how do you go back to them? So I couldn't. So I stayed. I stayed in a toxic relationship. I stayed in the name of love. I So now that is the reason I'm wearing these handcuffs. Sure. Even in the book, you see, I'm holding on to them like this. They represent a man I insisted on holding on to when he no longer needed me. By doing so, I put myself into a prison of mm. love willingly. See, the handcuffs were not on my wrists, so I could have easily let go. Mm. But I insisted on holding on when he no longer needed me. Mm. I held on to him like these handcuffs. And by doing so, I put myself into a prison, into a prison of love. The handcuffs are not on my wrists, so it means I could have easily let go. But I insisted on holding on when the relationship had reached an expiry date, when love and respect were no longer on the menu. Mm. I looked for reasons mm. to stay instead of looking for reasons to exit the relationship. Sure. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I think because you received so much love as well from this man, yeah. I think you mentioned earlier that you, you, you wanted that love that you knew yes. to come back. Yes. But it, it, that never happened. That never it happened. It was gone. It was gone. How did you leave eventually? And where is he now? Before sure. we close it up. Um, by the grace of God, I gained courage to take my power from this man. That is how I eventually left. I, 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 I allowed myself to die. Yeah. I literally put myself into a rehab. <clears throat> yes. Wow. And acknowledged that I am addicted to this man. I am addicted to pain. And I needed to deal with that. And I, it's, it's, it's in the book. So if you want to know how I eventually left, yeah. it is in the book. But yeah, I, I, God dragged me out of this relationship. And yeah, I left. He's around. We share a child. Hey, in the, wow. in, during this mess, in the midst of this mess, I fell pregnant. Yes. In the chaos. In the chaos, I Yo. fell pregnant. And there were, I ended up in a psychiatric ward when I was nine months pregnant. Yes. Was it that bad? It was that bad. A week later, I gave birth to our boy, Aww. whom I named Ubileli Rona Waka Refins. So he's still, Problem. he's there, he's in the child's life, and we get along. We sit like this. We really? never think he's the man who crushed me. No, <laughs> I, I promise you, yeah. No, he's still there. We, we forgive. Yes. And move on. On the other side of forgiveness lies freedom. You're oh, yeah. such a good person, honestly. Yeah, like you, it, uh, like wow. I mean, you're. In, I, I think he's blessed to have you as the mother of of his child. Oh, thank you. And yeah. I mean, everyone, even your ex husband. You know, yeah. I mean, they're so blessed. And I wish you nothing but the best because I think thank you so you're much. just such an incredible person. I, I don't blame him. That blessing, though. <laughs> I don't blame him for also falling in love with you. I don't think that yeah. he was out of love. I just think that everything that you mentioned, the influence, the pressure, yeah. all of that got to him, and understandably yeah. so. If you have mm -hmm. been in prison for such a long time yeah. there's just so yeah. many factors that are involved yes. but i think ultimately god knows what's best for you yes and i pray that you get that you receive that every single love that you deserve because you yeah. also don't compromise in the quality yeah. of love that you give no, out i don't i don't and 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 you know i've never mentioned this in an interview but he's apologized for the first time in four years Wow. On Valentine's Day, he said... He's going to think of Valentine's Day. He's going to think of Valentine's, <laughs> this guy. And you're so right. He says, I yeah. still love you. I still love you. I am sorry for everything that I've put you through. 
I hope one day you will find it in your heart to forgive me. And I said, I forgave you a long time ago. I forgave you a long time ago. Let's just raise up a boy. That's it. No turning back. No wow. turning back. Yeah. But you just can't have me anymore. No, you can't <laughs> have me anymore. Let's just raise the You had me. Boy. You had an opportunity yes. to love me. Yes. And you played with the opportunity. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? A beautiful book came out of it. Of Your story, because yes. for every test, there's a testimony. And this yeah. alone is a ministry because it, it gets is. anywhere. Someone Absolutely. reads the book and find healing wherever they are. The same way people are watching at home yeah. and are finding healing just hearing you talk. I yeah. think you're absolutely incredible. Thank Please continue you. sharing your story. Thank continue you. helping people. I yeah. mean, yo, 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 guys. We are giving away the book as Innocent said. We're going to give away two copies. So all you need to do is tell us why you deserve the book and what you enjoyed yeah. most about this interview i think i enjoyed every single part of it yeah same. um especially the part about love i can see she's a lover was, of love she is a yes. lover of love like she like, goes like, like we deep were in smiling love. like from ear to ear the whole time listening to how you fell in love yes, yeah. love 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 love, love is it beautiful. oh yeah love is beautiful Especially when you have mastered loving yourself. Especially Ooh. when you have mastered loving yourself. That's a nice way to close yeah. up the show. Thank you so much for tuning into St. John's TV right here. On I've been through the most podcast with myself, Innocent. And myself, Millicent. Thank you so much to our city for coming Yay. through. Thank and you. thank you for watching. Thank it's you. bye for now. Bye.